but the ears play a vital part in the elephant's cooling system. Elephants do not have sweat glands like us, so they can't sweat and cool themselves down. So that's why they flap the ears to cool themselves down. When you interact with Rambo, you're going to get to touch and feel behind his ears. When you do so, have a look behind his ears and you'll notice there's a large network of veins. Closely situated to his skin and this is what cools the elephant down. If Rambo comes to a watering hole and it's hot during the day, he's going to wet behind his ears to cool himself down. If there's a bit of a breeze blowing, he'll stand with his ears open. Wind hits him behind his ears, pretty much acts like a car radiator. Cools the elephant down that way as well. Elephants pump their total blood mass through their ears every 20 minutes. And this will cool the elephant down by three and a half degrees. Just to tell you a little bit about Rambo's trunk, there's over 100,000 muscle units in Rambo's trunk alone. Six working muscle groups, and Rambo can lift anywhere between 270 and 500 kgs with his trunk. That's half a ton, guys. So if you had to lift any of us, it's like lifting a loaf of bread for him. Those large tusks that you are viewing, all that they are are upper modified incisors. Those two little sharp teeth on top of your mouth, that's what you're viewing on the elephant. You're only viewing two thirds of it, the other one third is embedded in his skull. We can also tell the age and the size of the elephant by the size of its tusks and the diameter of its front foot. Now the largest tusks are found in a British museum. One tusk weighs in at 109 kgs. Rambo's tusk is only weighing 45, 50 kgs at the moment. They estimated this elephant in the museum to be 12 and a half tons. That's an any three of Rambo. Yeah. Okay, one mammoth elephant. Yeah. Like I said, Rambo's going to lift his trunk and his tusks up and he's going to open his mouth so he can be inside his mouth at his molars, his second nose and his tongue. Now elephants get 144 teeth in their lifetime, six sets of teeth. Rambo will get his last set of molars when he's around about 50 years of age. Have any of you guys ever heard of elephant graveyards? Yes. Okay, people under the perception that elephants go down to a certain area to go and pass away. This is a little bit untrue. What actually happens with the elephant, it's on its last set of molars. It can't eat rough vegetation, big branches, bark of trees, so it moves down to softer pastures, watering holes or watering so sources. It'll eat the soft vegetation around the watering hole. It's also at its most heaviest now, so it's battling to support its weight, so it's going to go into the water to become more buoyant as well. When its last set of molars get reabsorbed into its mouth and it no longer has any molars left, it will still continue to drink at the watering hole. Eventually, it will end up starving to death. And that's why we locate their bones and their skulls near these watering holes. Okay. Actually, you don't like to refer to them as elephant graveyards, but the elephant's actually going down there to try and prolong his life a little bit longer. Okay, when Rambo's got his mouth open, Gift's going to show you two little holes on the top of Rambo's palate. Now, this is called the Jacob's organ. Many animals, even reptiles have got this. Guys, even we've got this. And this is Rambo's second nose. And what he uses it for is as a testing device. So when the female's in ostrich, he'll go up behind her and he'll sniff her. Then he'll take his trunk and put it inside his mouth where these two holes are. A message will be conveyed through to his brain to tell him if she's ready to make or not. If it's a negative, he'll just move on to the next female, do the same test until he comes across a female that is ready to make. You'll notice Rambo's got a collar on him. It's just a tracking device. It's a precaution that we take with Rambo when Rambo comes into must. Does everyone know what must is? Must is when male elephants start coming on TV. Okay, or so same like your female dog at home comes on TV, male elephants come on TV as well. Okay, so when Rambo comes into must, first of all, he starts lactating up the side of his head. Between his eye and his ear, there's a little much over here. This is called the temporal gland. He'll start lactating out of here, so it's all going to be wet down the side of his face. It's going to be wet between his back legs. His penis sheet is going to continue to drip a mucus substance as well. And he's going to walk a bit with a swagger like he owns the place. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys ever see an elephant wet between the ears, please do not approach it. It's not a very happy creature. There's a lot of testosterone going on in that animal. Like I said, it is a precaution that we do take with Rambo. Sometimes, when he's in must, our fences don't stop him. Our one elephant handler had to go 30 kilometers down the road to go and fetch Rambo 
<laughs> the tram boys are looking for ladies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, elephants are hind gut fermenters. This means that he's only got one stomach, the same as us, but Rambo's digestive system works very quickly. From the time Rambo puts food into his mouth until it comes out of his rear, it takes 30 to 60 minutes. So Rambo's a bulk feeder. He's not getting maximum nutrition from what he's eating either because it's passing through his system so quickly. So make, to make up for that nutrition, he's got to eat a lot. And Rambo eats 5% of his body weight every single day. This is anywhere between 350 and 450 kgs of vegetation out on our reserves every single day. What we are feeding them over here is horse pellets. This is the only time when we feed them, now when they go into the boma. The rest of the time, they're feeding and drinking themselves like normal elephants out on our reserve. Elephants are also very dependent on water. They need water every single day of their lives. And guys, he doesn't use his trunk as a straw, that is his nose. Depending on the size of the elephant, it will suck up anywhere between 12 and 20 liters of water at one given time and squirt it into his mouth. We will demonstrate this later with the buckets. When Rambo does come to a watering hole, in one sitting, he can drink up to 150 liters of water. Ooh. That's equivalent to two of the bars that you buy and fill to the top. <laughs> depending how hot it is, he can drink another 50 to 80 liters of water, depending on the temperature during the day. Question for you guys. How many knees does an elephant have? Anyone? Two. Two, two. 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 anyone else? Yes, right. Four. Forty. You told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just say two. Raise your hands. Front or back? Front. Back. Back. Oh. Back. Okay, they work exactly the same way we work, guys. If you had to take us and put us on all fours. So knees behind the animal and ankles. Front of the animal, elbows and wrists. Oh. Mammary glands as well. It's only mammal besides primates, humans and dussies that have got two mammary glands and they're situated at exactly the same spot as us, straight behind his front legs. Mm. When you interact with Rachel, you'll notice that hers are a little bit more predominant than Rambo's. Mm. You guys might have heard of elephants walking through tented camps and no one have been hearing them. Are these large mammals able to walk so quietly? Believe it or not, elephants walk on their tiptoes. Mm. When you interact with Rambo, you're gonna notice that his nails are situated in the front of his foot. Straight behind his nail structure is his bone structure. Underneath there's a cushion of muscle and fat, which acts as a shock absorber. So every time he puts his foot down, his full body weight goes into his foot, and his foot expands, taking that pressure up. Every time he lifts his foot, it contracts, it gets a little bit smaller. You also notice when you interact with Rambo, that his front feet are actually larger than his back feet. And this is just to support his heavy trunk, his tusks, and his skull. Now, us as game rangers or field guides, if we want to know whether we're tracking a male elephant or a female elephant, all that we have to do is look at the tracks, the footprints. These two mammals, they walk differently. When a male elephant walks, he'll leave four tracks in the ground, four footprints. When a female walks, she'll only leave a set of two. Wherever her front foot goes, her back foot's going to go into that exact same position. So just by looking at their tracks, we can identify if we are tracking a male or female elephant. Okay. I don't know if any of you guys heard, but as Rachel moved her up around the back here, she made a low grumbling noise. I'm sure you guys have all heard elephants vocalizing before. It's actually the same way blue whales communicate with each other. It's called infrasound. It's at a very low frequency sometimes when they're talking to each other over long distances. We can't even hear them. Us as human beings, we're able to hear 20 decibels. Elephants, less than zero. Also, depending on the terrain that they're in, they can communicate with each other anywhere between a distance of 12 to 15 kilometers. It has been recorded of them communicating with each other up to 50 kilometers. Now, how it works, it sounds like they're making this low grumbling noise that comes from the pit of their stomach. It actually comes from their larynx. And what it does, it vibrates through the elephant, vibrates through the elephant's bones. So down his leg structure, into his foot structure, into the ground. Vibrates in the ground at a very low frequency, anywhere between 12 to 15 kilometers. Hits out the elephant on the other side. Remember, it's coming up from the ground now. So feet first, leg first, bone structure, up to his brain, message conveyed. And that's how they talk to each other over long distances.
Okay, guys, we're going to start interacting. Please remember what I said. Wherever the elephant handler tells 